Hi, I'm Emily. Welcome to episode 16 of Holding the Sticks, a hockey-themed fiber arts podcast. everyone and welcome to my craft room here in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. Like I said, my name is Emily and you can find me on Ravelry as Shanti Dragon or on Twitter and Plurk as Emily3022. Today I am wearing my hitchhiker shawlette here. It is made with some discontinued knit picks yarn in a discontinued color so <laughs> I'm not even really sure what um, the color name or the yarn name was but it's a fingering weight and it reminds me of the pansies in my mom's little front garden so I'm wearing it today to celebrate spring I'll just give you a little closer up view there there we go all right I always like to thank everybody for watching Thanks to those who are coming back and also to first time viewers for checking me out. And thanks to everyone who has been in contact with me over the past couple of weeks. I really appreciate it, especially on those days when I may not be um, as happy and chipper <laughs> as maybe I should. So uh, I really appreciate everybody. Um, everybody's support and just friendly comments and good mornings and good nights and everything. So let's get right into some administrative stuff now. I wanted to announce first of all that I am not going to continue doing show notes. Now if anybody has a real problem with that just let me know if I get a lot of people who really rely on the show notes I will of course um, be happy to provide those. I am just trying to streamline this process as much as I can for myself and that therefore will give you all a better show and um, and I'll be able to do it more often. So um, if you really heavily rely on the show notes give me a little private message on Ravelry or contact me on Plur for Twitter and um, we I will reconsider of course if y'all need me to. I will also make sure to clearly reference the patterns and um, links that I use in the show. So um, if I think you all might have trouble understanding what I'm saying when I um, say a pattern name or designer name or something like that, I will put it on the screen for you here so that you um, can look things up for yourselves. And if there are complicated links then I will put those up here as well okay um, just a little update something I haven't even mentioned in probably a couple of months I have not done any further research or tried to get iTunes to accept my podcast in their directory so um, I just wanted to reiterate to those of you who may not know that if you want to watch my show on iTunes, you can manually add it to download um, on iTunes or Downcast. And I have an RSS feed and I will put it in right here. The instructions on how to manually um, subscribe to my podcast are on the blog where the show notes used to be. So you can find those there. Um, I am going to be, over the next several weeks, experimenting with the time and day of my recordings. Um, just trying to, like I said, streamline the process for myself and um, also hopefully for y'all's benefit as well to try and get the show out more often. Um, not that I've missed a lot of shows or anything, but um, with everything going on, it's... It's better for me to have everything streamlined and that's less excuses for me to give to not feel like recording and I always have a good time when I record so when I don't record I always kind of kick myself. So <laughs> We will um, experiment with that. It is Saturday 
um, right now, April the 6th, 2013. And I usually record on Mondays. So we're going to try this. Um, I worked this morning. And so I may seem a little more tired than usual. I don't know. Um, hopefully not. And I will probably do the editing tomorrow and uploading tomorrow night. So it'll just seem like a day earlier to y'all, but the, the recording is actually taking place on Saturday at about 5 in the evening. So, all right. Let's get into the pregame reports so y'all know what's going to happen in the show today. I will, of course, share my fiber arts projects with you. I will share my fitness woes over the last couple of weeks. Um, I get to announce the Knit Along Crochet Along winner for the Matt March Mad Hat um, Knit Along Crochet Along, and that's exciting. Um, I will be giving you an overview of the Apple Blossom and You podcasts in the first intermission. Um, in the Hockey 101 segment today, I will be discussing icing, which is one of the rule, rules of the game that may be changed in the near future. And of course, there is always more. So stay tuned, and we'll get right into the first period. Okay, slightly different camera angle. Um, things weren't looking too good there when I sat back down after running and grabbing my project. So <laughs> we'll try a slightly different camera angle now. All right, in the first period, we are in the zone with some developing play. Um, I actually don't have very much developing play. I've got one thing that I've actively been working on on my needles, and I bet y'all can guess what that is. It is my Mork sweater. Um, Mork was designed by Julia Farwell Clay, and it will look like this when it's finished. I will be using, or I am using, Barocco Ultra Alpaca in the Redwood colorway. That's number 6281. I'm using a size 6, 4 millimeter needle for this project, and I'm getting so close to being finished. Um, Y'all have seen the body already, so I won't show that again. I finished the sleeve. I believe I was still working on this sleeve the last time. So there's one finished sleeve with all its little ends dangling out here in the little cable detail at the cuff that I like so much with a nice little bumble hair. My co-host has shed all over everything. <laughs> My co-host from last week. There we go. There's that detail that I like so much. And this is the other sleeve that, look how far I've gotten on it. There's that little detail. I'm almost to the sleeve cap decreases um, and bind offs. So that is very exciting. I'm dropping stuff. Sorry, guys. That's the only thing I've actively been working on this week or the last couple of weeks. Um, I've actually w worked on other things, but they are in the next segment, which is She Shoots, She Scores! Woo! I have finished three projects this time. I guess that would qualify as a hat trick, but I didn't think to do a drawing or anything, so uh, we won't do that this time. Sorry, guys. <laughs> One of these days, I'll get myself organized. But the first project that I finished was delivered to mom when I visited her last weekend. It is the Sark, <laughs> Sock Yarn Slouch Hat by Sandra Bickelmeyer. And I used hand spun, um, it was a hand spun bat from Nitty and Color. The colorway was the Grapes of Wrath. And um, since it's already been delivered to mom, here's a picture of me modeling it before I took it down there. And I really, really love the way this hat turned out. And I was really scared because the um, the ribbing was a twisted rib, which makes it tighter usually. And mom doesn't like stuff tight around her head. So I was really worried it would be too tight and that the wool content would be irritating to her. Um, the bat was um, superwash merino and milk fiber. So it felt really soft, but when I knit it up, um, it felt like it might be a little prickly, but mom, mom put it on when I brought it down there. She loved it. She said it was very comfortable. So yay. And um, I just love the way it turned out. Love those colors. 
And I keep shaking the camera, you guys. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> Getting too excited in here. The other, uh, or another finished object that I have is, this is just a hat that I designed. I cast on and just kind of flew by the seat of my pants. And this is just a little bit of a barely slouchy, nice loose knit hat. Here we go. And of course you can wear it lower or higher and it's um, knit with the Cascade Cherub DK that I knit some other hats for mom with. Um, super soft, wonderful, yummy yarn. Um, this hat is done with a size 8 needle. Um, it's US size 8 or 5 millimeters. So it's a little bit loose knit which makes it um, a little airier and hopefully mom will be able to get more wear out of that in the summer. We turn to the side here. See it just barely slouches. There. I hope you all could see that okay there we go and I really like it so I will be washing this with my next round of laundry and sending it down to mom in Raleigh now my hair is going to stand straight up check this out <laughs> anyway <laughs> so that will go to mom soon and the other hat I actually finished knitting while I was in Raleigh with mom so I just gave it right to her and here's a picture of it. Now this one is exactly like the other one that I knit earlier and um, that first one I knit for her wasn't quite deep enough. So um, she asked me to make one with a little bit more uh, depth to it. So I did and she's using that one now. So um, I believe that's it. Oh, and that one is called the Race for Life Chemo Cap by Erica Downs. And I used the Cascade Cherub DK in the color 34. US size 8, 5 millimeter needles um, on that one. And the colorway for this hat that I did, um, that I just had on my head, that is, um, actually, I don't know the colorway, so never mind. <laughs> Sorry. So that is it for She Shoots, She Scores, except for one thing in Spinorama. I have finished the alpaca, the eight ounces of alpaca. Um, it was baby alpaca actually. And um, I'm really, really happy with it. So this is, like I said, eight ounces of baby alpaca. It's a Packa Puff by the Alpaca Yarn Company. Let me show you the little tag that came with it. Here it is. And this is um, sold by a local farm here that raises alpaca, alpacas. I don't know why I suddenly can't say alpaca. <laughs> I'm hoping that eventually they will sell their own fiber. But in the meantime, this stuff was wonderful. I can't even tell you guys how soft this is. This is 8 ounces. Um, 300 yards of a three ply. Um, it came out bulky, which is what I was aiming for. So that made me happy. That side. And it's just a heathered gray. It's a natural color, I believe. Um, so nothing spectacular color wise, but oh, if you guys could feel how soft this is, I wish you could. Here it is. All of this spun up. Flies. Hopefully it'll show you there. There we go. Uh, alpaca is not my favorite fiber to spin because it doesn't have that wonderful bounce like wool does. Um, but and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. It's so, so, so soft, but it's also very bulky. And... Um, it might have to be maybe a lace scarf of some kind or something like that that it won't matter too much if it stretches or grows so there is that finished object spinorama <laughs> and I have a little equipment room segment which will fit right in with that spinning section there um, I have purchased a couple of fitness rewards because I've met my fitness goals I'll talk about that more in the training room of course but I thought I would share these with you today um, here in the equipment room because they are fibery wonderful fiber related things <laughs> um, 
so I purchased two braids of fiber and this one is from Godiva Yarns and it is www.mysweetspot2.etsy.com and that should be visible on this card here there you go and there's the fiber this is one of my favorite color combinations it is there we go that's pretty good representation uh, soft greens into creamy whites and pinks into reds it's like a rose garden and I have actually spun fiber in similar colorways before and I just love it so much um, so I'm excited to spin that but the next thing that I want to put on my wheel probably as soon as I'm done recording while I watch the Hurricanes game tonight will be this braid of fiber which is just absolutely beautiful this is um, actually both of these braids I believe are Falkland let me double check here yes these both of these braids are Falkland this one is from friends and, and <laughs> if I can speak this one is from friends and fiber on Etsy and if you just do an Etsy search, you will find it. Friends in Fiber. She does the most beautiful colorways. This one is called Think Spring. And it's six ounces. The first braid I showed you was four ounces. And I will start spinning this just as soon as I'm done fin as I'm just as soon as I'm finished talking with y'all. If you can call this talking rambling and babbling. <laughs> So yeah, it's a pretty good um, representation back here of those colors. As always, the light is a little bit tricky today. All right, that is it for all of my fibery goodness. So let's get into the first intermission. All right, first intermission is the Rec League. This is where I talk about knit-alongs, crochet-alongs, and craft-alongs of all kinds. And this is the wrap-up for my March Mad Hatter knit-along crochet-along. And I am I already drew the winner for the prize. There were three choices of prizes. Um, you can either choose one of these two sets of stitch markers Or you can have any Ravelry downloadable or giftable pattern, $5 or less. And the winner is, it was number 42, and that is Crazy Knitting Fool, who is Kristen from Michigan. So congratulations, Kristen. Um, get in touch with me either on Ravelry, Plurk, or um, probably Ravelry private message is the best way to get me and let me know which of those three prizes you would like to have and I will get it right out to you. If you choose the um, giftable pattern then of course let me know which pattern you would like. So yay! <laughs> I will announce a new knit along next week. I haven't decided what it's going to be yet so um, we'll just keep you in suspense until then. Are you ready to come into the training room with me? <laughs> I, um, I'm sitting here in my training room, it seems. Um, this is the room where I have my stationary bike set up. And so this is where I have been for all of my fitness in the past couple of weeks. It seems like every time I think the weather is going to get warm, uh, we get another cold snap. And um, it's not just cold snaps. Last Monday we had another um, sleet and ice storm, so you can't go running in that. Well, some people will, but um, I have to be so careful about injuries and such that I'm not going to risk slipping on a little patch of ice <laughs> and hurting myself. So I have been on the stationary bike. I have been doing it. Um, despite all of my woes with the weather, um, I've had some weird, I won't call them injuries, but some weird aches and pains where I don't want to um, exacerbate those by running. So the stationary bike is safe. It's a low impact exercise. And 
I've just been a mess the last couple of weeks. Um, I put my workout clothes on and I don't feel like I look good in them and I'm, I feel a little sloppy or I've been feeling like I, um, I, I did put on a couple of pounds when I went off the diuretic because, you know, a diuretic um, makes you lose water weight. And I expected those pounds to come back on and um, I have already lost some of those pounds again. <laughs> However, I just kind of feel a little bit fat and sloppy and I know it's not true. Um, I look at myself in the mirror and I'm not either one of those things, but I just haven't felt myself the past couple of weeks. So um, I've been trying really hard to keep a positive attitude and just keep doing the right things. Um, my eating hasn't been the best, but it hasn't been as bad as it could be. Um, so try not to beat myself up too much. <laughs> it's just the same struggles I think that anybody on a fitness journey will go through. So I'm just toughing it out and I'm hoping that my ankle will stop making weird achy feelings in my foot and then I can maybe start running this coming week. So that is it for my fitness. Um, the bottom line is I'm getting it done. So um, that's the important thing. And the blood pressure is staying in the healthy range. And that's the, the most important thing. Um, I never got into this to lose weight, but once you lose it, you get used to um, feeling a certain way. And when a little bit comes back on, it's like, oh. <laughs> but like I said, keep keeping on. That's what I'm doing. And um, as far as things at work, uh, doing my massage therapy, I've had an amazing couple of weeks at work to be perfectly honest um, I have been very uh, humbled at work these last couple of weeks I've had a couple of clients who have taken me aside and told me how much of a difference that the work I do makes in their lives um, I had a woman with tears in her eyes tell me that I needed to keep doing whatever it was that I was doing with her in her sessions because she hadn't had a migraine in over a month and this is a woman who had previously suffered um, weekly or multiple times a week from migraines so um, I think a lot I can take some of that credit for the work that I do and I think just some lifestyle changes that she's made have, has also helped her um, but still she literally came to me with tears in her eyes just to, to thank me for that and to be so appreciated is very, very humbling and makes me love the field that I work in even more. So with that, let's get into the second intermission around the league. All right, around the league today, I wanted to talk about one of my favorite podcasts that was on hiatus for a while, and I kept hoping it would come back, and now she has announced that it is coming back, so yay! It is Apple Blossom and You. Um, it's a podcast hosted by Sarah and her husband, Matt. Uh, Matt um, may not always be there with her hosting it. I hope I hope he will still be when they come back. Um, I haven't heard all the details yet, but either way, I really enjoyed it uh, both ways. Back back when Sarah hosted it by herself, and then when Matt joined her as well. So um, whatever they decide to do is is cool by me. <laughs> um, Sarah and Matt live um, near the coast of North Carolina, and Sarah is a knitter, as Matt is as well. Um, they both knit. Uh, Matt also does wood turning. He makes beautiful shawl pins and writing pins. Um, I'm hoping to catch their Etsy shop update. I'm not sure of that address yet, or I would share it with you. Um, but apparently they're going to open an Etsy shop here in the next week or so, and I can't wait to see Sarah's project bags and Matt's woodwork. Um, pens and shawl pins. Um, Sarah knits, crochets, I think she weaves a little bit, she spins, and she sews. Um, she's also an amazing cook and does a lot of baking, or did at one time a lot of baking. Um, she too has started on a fitness journey, so a lot of her cooking and baking habits have been changing. 
Um, I remember, though, when she had a baking segment on her show, I usually had to skip it because it was so tempting. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't watch it because then I want to eat all the cookies and cupcakes and everything else. <laughs> so sorry, Sarah. I could tell it was amazing stuff, though, but too tempting for me. <laughs> Um, Sarah also raises chickens and she has uh, a cute little dog named Apple. Um, I really enjoy the podcast, so go check her out when she releases her next one. I believe it'll be in the next few days if it hasn't already been released. Time to drop the puck for the third period and a little bit of hockey talk. I'm not going to discuss my teams much this week. Um, Needless to say, the Hurricanes have been breaking my heart on a regular basis. <laughs> they have won, uh, I believe, one of their last ten games, so there's not much to talk about there. Uh, the Checkers have been doing better than that, but they are still struggling and reaching for a playoff spot, so um, hopefully they will manage that. And uh, just with all the injuries and call-ups and everything else, it's just been a difficult and part of the season here. So let's get straight into a Hockey 101. I am going to um, skip over the um, penalties again this week because I wanted to talk about icing. I know I talked briefly about it before, but something happened last week that really made me want to discuss more about icing and um, talk about why the NHL is discussing changing the icing rules. So I have my handy dandy uh, rink diagram today and I'll do a quick review on the current NHL rule for icing but first I want to tell you what brought this on <laughs> on April the 2nd I was watching the Hurricanes play uh, the Washington Capitals and Yoni Pitkinen uh, went raced for a puck on an icing call and um, slipped just before he reached the end boards and slid at a very rapid speed feet first into the end boards and had to be stretchered off the ice. Um, you never ever want to see that happen. You know sports are supposed to be entertaining and when somebody gets hurt that badly it's not entertaining anymore. So um, your heart just kind of stops. I mean, I understand I don't know these guys personally or anything like that, but when you follow a team and you're passionate about your team and everything, you, you feel like you sort of know these guys. And to see Yoni in such pain, um, what it wound up was that he broke his calcaneus bone, which is your heel. So he's out for the rest of the season. That is what has brought on this whole icing discussion. So, um, quick review as to what icing is in the NHL currently. Um, we talked about this a few episodes back. Um, I'm going to get my little diagram up here. Let's say that this is the blue team's defensive zone. And let's say that this is the red team's zone, defensive zone here. And icing is if the blue team shoots bats or deflects the puck from their defensive zone across the center line, which is this line here, and across the goal line, which is the goal line is not just this part here with the goal. The goal line is this whole red line here. So basically the blue, if this is the blue team's defensive zone, um, they would have shot the puck all the way across the ice to here. The rule as it currently stands is that this puck is going down the ice like this and a blue player and a red player will, will race to get to the puck first. If the blue player touches the puck first, then icing is not called. If the red player touches the puck first, and this is after, you know, blue or red, after it crosses this goal line, so when it's in this area here, um, that's when the touch has to happen. If the red team touches the puck first, um, then um, icing is called. And the face-off is moved to a spot 
that is to the red team's advantage. So back, it'll come back over here. And also the blue team is required to keep the same players on the ice as before. So um, that basically the players that were out on the ice for blue when they ice the puck have to stay out there. And that often means that you've got tired players on the ice. So that is why, that's why players um, will take the risk of racing to the puck to get that to negate an icing call. So that is the way the rule stands now. Um, Yoni Pitkinen's injury was not the first major injury that happened because of this rule. Um, there was, uh, a, I believe, a rookie last season who broke his femur. Um, several years ago in one of the European leagues, a player suffered spinal injuries and actually passed away a couple of weeks later from those injuries. So this rule is just a bad idea. Um, the speeds at which these guys go and then one little slip and you know to hit the wall at that force it's just not not a good idea <laughs> so there are two proposed alternatives to this icing rule the first alternative is called no touch or automatic icing um, and that would be that icing is called when the puck crosses the goal line there's no race for the pucks um, it's just an automatic call and the NHL, the National Hockey League, seem to think that this is a boring way to do things and that the race for the puck makes it more exciting. So they came up with something called hybrid icing. Hybrid icing is, we'll get this out again here. <laughs> Once again, remember blue. the blue team's defensive zone is here, the red team's defensive zone is here. So same, same thing as last time. The blue team has iced the puck down, down here. And in hybrid icing, if the blue team reaches, basically there, there would be an invisible line. They would probably make it a visible line if they decided to use this rule. But right um, where these two dots are here, the line would just go straight through there. And if blue reaches, reaches that line first, then there would be no icing. But if red reaches the line first, then there would be icing. They're not really after the puck. They're just going for the line. Um, so that still keeps a little bit of excitement with the race for the puck, but makes it much more safe because this is the stopping area instead of this. They have a lot more room to stop before they hit the wall. So that is my little discussion on icing. I hope it made sense. And I really hope to see um, a rule change happen over the summer. Now, during the first part of the AHL season, that's the league that the Charlotte Checkers play in, um, they use this hybrid icing rule. And about mid-season, they switched back to regular icing. I'm not sure why, because the hybrid icing seemed to be working just fine. Um, I guess they weren't happy because sometimes it's a little bit of a judgment call as to who's going to reach that line first, but honestly, uh, I think player safety is much more important than, than pretty much anything. So that is my little discussion on icing, and let's hope that that changes before next season. little bit of post-game chatter. It'll be pretty quick today. This whole episode has been pretty quick, so I hope y'all aren't too disappointed. I feel like I've just raced through the whole thing, but um, some, some weeks I blabber on and on, and other weeks I don't have as much to talk about. So, uh, quick one-minute mom update. I went to see her last weekend. She had her second chemo treatment on the previous Wednesday. She tends to have... Um, her most side effects the following weekend after a treatment. So my sisters and I have split it up that uh, one of us will be with her from Friday all the way through the following Wednesday, I think. <laughs> this time, just two of my, um, myself and my older sister made it down, but mom was doing okay. Um, like I said, mom is doing okay. <laughs> she gets very, very tired after a treatment and, um, does much better if she has somebody to help her with like food and stuff like that. Um, my older sister made sure that her house is very clean and um, which she does partially um, as part of her income so she's very good at it 
and she filled up mom's fridge with some wonderful food. So when I got down there, I felt kind of useless. <laughs> so I knitted mom another hat, which I showed you earlier. <laughs> but um, it was good to see her, and uh, she's rocking that bald head. She looks great, and um, we got four more treatments to go, so we're going to make it. <laughs> um, the pictures that you saw at the beginning and probably some more will be at the end of the podcast. Um, if you've been watching for a while, you'll recognize my costume, um, Skittle the Skunk, and my husband's costume, Scape the Goat. These are the professional pictures we had taken while we were at the con in Atlanta a couple of weekends ago. Um, we They have a, it's called Fur Shoot. They set up this photo studio and you can go in and have your pictures taken and then you pay to have prints or um, what I did was I just bought the DVD and um, they, they just sent it to us yesterday and we were so excited <laughs> so you can see our costumes a lot better in these pictures because um, they're such high quality so I thought y'all would like to see those and other than that um, crazy weather is I guess is the norm for spring um, we had snow earlier in the week, like I said, in the fitness segment, but I'm hoping that's all past now. We're expecting temperatures to get up near 70 in the next few days. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I'm excited. You know, I love winter weather when it's actually winter. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of it when it's not. <laughs> but tonight is, um... Hockey night. I am watching Hurricanes host the Rangers this evening, and I'm hoping they won't break my heart again. <laughs> and oh, they called up Zach Dalpe, so um, Zach will be playing with the Hurricanes tonight. Yay! I love watching him play. I hope he does really, really good. And we will have our weekly pizza night, so I've got nice frozen pizza waiting to go in the oven, and um, just looking forward to a nice, quiet, enjoyable evening. And I hope that y'all are as well. And until next time, may all of your fiber arts projects and your favorite hockey teams stay out of the penalty box.